High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. To watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, walk a cup with team. Back on the Sportsman Zone and we continue with uh, football. The schoolboy season may be over in Jamaica, but that does not mean that the fun is. And after what was an extremely eventful and quality-filled season, we have enlisted the services of our in-house football analyst, yeah, Mr. So-called Prediction Guru himself, Lejay Williams, to come up with his team of the season. I'm sure he'll do a much better job at this than he did at predicting the scores for the campaign. Um, so let's get right into the meat of the matter then, um, Lejay. Before we get to the teams though, we want to have a look at pretty much a short list for the different positions. Where do we start? At the goalkeeping position? Yeah, that's where we're starting from, back to front, you it's know. It's important to build a solid defence, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And, you know, here I have, you know, Raul Renton from Jamaica College. They dropped out early, but I think they had a few standout players. You know, Antoine Gooden from Glenmuir, you know, influential in a couple penalty shootouts. Tajari Lee as well, um, his penalty exploits. Had a rough start to the season, but he came on. I know I have to give a special mention to Leighton Murray from St. Diego. They dropped out early, but you know, Leighton Murray gave us one of the best moments of the seasons and probably the, the, the best moment of my commentary career so far. So, you know, <laughs> as, 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 yeah, as, as a Spanish town national myself, <laughs> you know, one fat jet, big up yourself, Leighton Murray. <laughs> yeah, how about, before we even move on from the goalkeeping position, the St. George's goalkeeper who had, a, Dijon Davis, yeah. who had a terrific game, I remember, in the quarterfinal round against Jamaica College, and um, who, by all accounts, had a pretty good season. Uh, how much did you consider him um, for a spot, at least, on the shortlist? I, I did consider him, but I think that, you know, he was swapping out with the other goalkeeper a lot, so he wasn't the nailed on number one for most of the season, so that came into my thinking as well. And I have to say it, I'll put the caveat out right now. The list, all of these decisions are mine. Don't attack Sports Max Zone. Attack <laughs> Leger Williams, you get me? And, and if you have a problem with anything that I say, you know where to find me, you get me? So. That's, that, that's the thinking for the rest of the, 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 the these um, picks. I'm happy you said that. I was going to say it at some point in this discussion, but I'm glad you beat me to it. So let's get to the, the centre-backs now, shall we? Yeah, this was, a, this was a really... This is the longest shortlist. Um, a lot of quality in these positions. You know, Nashan Bolt, Malachi Sterling, who coming into the season, I thought, was going to be one of the best players this season. I think he was, you know, while he was in the competition. Alex Xavier Gooden can't leave him out. Michael Forbes, I think he was spectacular in his um, first schoolboy season. Robina Gordon came back, was an all manning player last year, came back and delivered the goods again. Mona's top goal scorer from centre back. Robert Siawa, I, I thought he was shaky last year, but this season I think he improved greatly. And Anil Headley, I just think that for the role that he had to do in that Glenmuir team, defending wide challenge channels and the set pieces and just everything that he has to do on ball and off ball, I couldn't leave him out of this centre back list. All right, let's look at the left backs and then the right backs, shall we? Yeah, I think for the full backs, you know, this. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at the best left backs of 2023, Lejay. Yeah, and I, I think that there weren't a lot of good, uh, let me not say good fullbacks, but you know, there weren't any many stunning performances from fullback this season. So these shortlists will be rather short. You know, Brandon Wallace, Livingston, who played left wing back for stats, and Tahir Lawrence, who I think had a pretty good season. But I, I, I don't think that there was a, there was, there definitely wasn't a, a, a you know, a huge amount of good fullbacks. Good performing fullbacks this season for me. Yeah, so I the think right the, right, the right back list should be rather short as well. Three players also. Ramon Francis, I think he, similar to O'Neill Headley, he had a big role in that Glenmuir team. Atiba Green, now he, he was a standout player for me. Really good 
for Klein and College, switching from left back to right back this season, had to do a lot. And I think Tariq Jones for Jamaica College, an unsung hero in that Walker Cup winning team, he had to invert, he had to do a lot of midfield duties along with his fullback duties. So I think he was pretty good as well. Yeah, and let's get into the midfield now, the best central midfielders yeah. for 2023. And this is, a, this is the toughest part for me. You know, I came here yesterday and I was speaking about how integral these defensive midfielders are. These are all more so the defensive type of midfielders who can get forward also. But, you know, Theon Kupi, I spoke about his performance in the Olivia Shield. Ronaldo Barrett, who I said is the best player in the Manning Cup this past season. The one green from Kingston College came from Wilmers and he really went on leaps and bounds as the season went on. Jason White, my goodness, what a player also. Th similar to QP, but even bigger in stature. He calls himself Busquets. I actually think he's more Roger. Adrian Reed Jr. really stepped up this season as well for St. George's, their captain. And Nikoi, Nikoi Gale, I think he was extremely impressive also. Yeah, high quality list that one. Um, let's look at the attacking midfielders now. Yeah, you know, similar, similar quality there. I think Dylan John, Jamaica College's top goal scorer this season, 15 goals, a lot of assists as well. Denzel McKenzie, 11 goals, I think, and 20 plus assists. He was fantastic this season. Kyle Gordon, we saw how mercurial he can be in those big situations. Tyrese Go, 20 goals this season, over 20 goals this season. Malakai Douglas, you can't leave him out of any list. The best player in the Costa Cup last season. And then Keanu Jackson from Heidel, I think, definitely deserves a spot on this list. He was really good for them as well. Yeah, and then the wingers and followed by the strikers. Yeah, and the wingers, similar to fullback, I think because the rise of three-back formations, I know just different systems. We saw Heidel get to the final playing with a midfield diamond. So not too many wingers, but I had to shoehorn in Amaria Henry because he's not an out-and-out -out striker for Heidel. Does a lot in the channel, so I think it would be unfair to put him there. But aside from that, I think Christopher Hull, um, no surprise that he's there, of course. Romario and Thomas coming from a central midfield position last year to the wing this season has been impressive. And Tajan Cummings, I think, was pretty good for Glenmere down the stretch. Yeah, very much the case. So there you go, the shortlist for the different positions on Lejay Williams' um, <laughs> team of the schoolboy football season. Um, we are going to go to a break, and when we return, he'll be revealing the actual team of the season. We'll be back. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, big up, manning cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. To watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, Walker Cup, which team are win the championship this season. Yo, Issa. Yeah, Leger Williams is about to name his team of the schoolboy football season across all competitions. And I'm sure he had some difficult decisions to make in arriving at the final 11. Um, Leger, let's start by getting what your formation is for this LW11. Yeah, um, you know, I had to put my coach's hat on. I'm at a basic person, I'm at a basic analyst. I'll go with a 4 2 3 1 which will morph into a 3 you know, 2 you 5. You have to say those things, right? Yeah, no, but I have to let people know, you know, especially okay. you, especially you, Ricardo. Okay. You know, it's going to okay. 4 2 3 1 will morph into a 3 2 5 in attack and will defend in a 4 4 2. All right, let's get the team revealed then, shall we? Leger's schoolboy football team of the season. Here is the 11. Yeah, and you know, Antoine Gooden in goal, it was a tough choice, but I think, you know, his exploits, I think he's decent with his feet. And Antoine had, Gooden, the and he, Glenmuir goalkeeper. Yeah, he, he had some good, good penalty shootout moments as well. Atiba Green, no-brainer for me at right back, personally. Clarendon um, College. Michael Forbes of Heidel, you know, he was under the radar for a lot of the season, but I think his, his ball carrying, his ball playing as well, I think he was fantastic. Nashan Bolt, I think, you know, he's... That goes without saying, best centre back this College season. Again. I know um, for left back, as I was mentioning, there weren't a, a lot of left backs that really caught my eye. So I was like, kind of stuck between playing a centre centre back there, which I ended up doing. It was either going to be O'Neill Headley of Glenmuir and Robinia Gordon, but I, I think Robinia Gordon is goal scoring exploits and his versatility. I think I, I would put him at left back, and I think he can defend the channels a bit better. So I'd put him at left back. Central midfield. Now this is a tough, tough area. You know, I, I stated that Ronaldo Barrett is the best player in, in, in Manning Cup. I stick by that. So he went in and then for that, it was either between Jason White and QP. And this is not me saying that Jason White is better than QP or the other way around. 
But I just think, based on the season that they had, and when they came up against each other, I, I think that Jason White got the edge on those occasions. So I'm going to give it to Jason White, but Fian QP, you know, you're, you're brilliant. You're yeah. brilliant. And this is an area where you would also have um, someone like uh, Adrian Reed from yeah, St. Exactly. George's so College. Yeah, the, the, comp the, competition, the well. competition was extremely fierce. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about Kyle Gordon in attacking midfield. I, I cheated a bit here as well because I mentioned that there weren't a lot of wingers for me. So I put Cole on the right, Kyle Gordon at the top, and then on the left because I know he can do it. He's a Craig Butler coach player after after all I know he has the versatility I put Denzel McKenzie on the left 30 plus goal contributions so I, I'm going to put him on the left there so you're playing a few out of position here yeah but you know you, you know in, in terms of the formation Ricardo it's a lot of there, there's a lot of fluidity in the front line we have a Kaim Dixon who my approximation to him in the world game would be someone like a Gabby Jesus for example yeah. can do it all can help out can help out with overloads on the wings so I think that if we have a left-sided space of Kaheem Dixon, Denzel McKenzie and Kyle Gordon who likes to drift out there as well, I think we'll get the right combinations with Hull and Atiba Green holding it on the right-hand side. And then, of course, you know, the two centrals, Jason White and, of course, Ronaldo Barrett. Good luck getting by that. So I know that there are players that were left out. The team could be different. But after days and hours of thinking, this is a team that I came up with. Yeah, and of course, whenever you do things like this, you are always going to have those questions. What about this player? What about that player? I guess the one player for me that I would probably throw in there, and it's because I was so impressed with him, every time I saw him this campaign and um, 20 goals, most of which came from the middle of the park, Tyrese Gull of Dintel Technical, he doesn't make your cut. Yeah, because, you know, the thing is with Dintil, as, as we saw Ricardo, we did But there. it's not Dintil we're talking about, no, no, it's Tyrese I, Gull. I, I'm making a point about their system and why I think that attributed, I, I think he was given too much of a free role. Mm -hmm. And we saw that when they came up against better opposition that wasn't even the best in the Manning Cup, it wasn't even the best in the Dacosta Cup, it's easy to lock those players down because yes, he takes a lot of responsibility, Tyrese Gull, because he's a fantastic player. Mm -hmm. And I will give it to you that his ball striking is second to none in this competition, but... I think he, because of that free role, he has a tendency to ghost out of games. Yes, he can impact them at the, the flip of a coin so quickly, but I still think I would want a little bit more impact in terms of what I would want from that central attacking midfield position. But let me ask you this, though. Given better quality players around him, don't you suspect, given his quality, that he would be able to make the type of impact that you are talking about. Because when you look at that Dintel team, now I can't say personally that having seen Dintel a few times, that I was overly impressed, especially with the quality that he had working with. But if you drop him around players from Clarendon College, around players from Glen Muir, um, around players from a St. George's College, are you looking at a completely different level of production from him? You know, actually, I, I don't think so. Mm. Reason being because I think some players thrive in environments where they are allowed to be free. Mm. If he were to go to a Glenmuir, or hypothetically speaking, of course, go to a Clarendon, where he has to be a part as opposed to being the whole. Mm -hmm. Because we saw, you th have to think about it, Giovanni Affleck is a young player. Young players tend to improve year on year. Giovanni Affleck didn't look as good as he looked last season. Yeah. Although and that's Tyrese, a Dintel number 20, by yeah, the way, striker. A, a, although he had supposedly a, a, a top, top creator behind him. And I think because Tyrese go, he, he played a bit too individualistic for my liking. And I understand why, because he's that good. But in terms of what I would want from that position, in terms of Kyle Gordon, Kyle Gordon does need to score or assist to be the best player in the park. Tyrese Go has to be involved in a goal for that to happen. And I... I, I think that's not enough for me, but he was definitely in consideration. Mm. All right, that's how we leave that. That is Leger's team of the Schoolboy football season. I'm sure we'll be seeing a few other teams around the place. Yeah, let's see yours. Let's hear what you think about Leger's. I'm excited to hear what you think. The prediction guru. Mm coming up with this team of the season. Let's take a break. More to come on the Sports Bank Zone, including the Class Moment nominations during Interactive. You'll want to see some of those. Tough decision this week, I think. Mm -hmm.
rock on. Which team are the best and I go better than the rest and if I hear team beat your chest, is a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall, but they never will know until the whistle blows around.